Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Dr. Olumide, your dear wife. Thank you for this privilege to, to bring us the word of God. Um, even though I know that I came in and I heard you celebrating your man of God, but please, if you if you do not mind, I want us to just honor the Lord in one minute as touching the life of this great servant of God. Can we all together give God a round of applause to honor him. Happy birthday to you, sir. Thank you sincerely in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we acknowledge that you are the only one who can change us. We acknowledge that you are the only one who can reveal your truth to us. We have come tonight to enjoy your presence even in this conference. Lord, we thank you for the truths that have come from the beginning of this conference even up until now. Lord, we thank you for the session we just had, mighty truths from your, your word. We pray that you bless our hearts tonight. Let your word come with power. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. We'll have a very brief session tonight. Um, while I sat back and Dr. Lumide was just teaching on the kingdom, I just thought to take it from there. Since um, it is a kingdom conference, Conferences like this, as I would always say, are designed to bring us to more accurate understandings of the ways of God. It is true that many, many believers are in ignorance as far as the ways of God um, are concerned. And that is because, like he rightly said, there are two dimensions to the gospel. There is the gospel of salvation and that is the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ man and creation being the object of that sacrifice so when it has to do with the love of jesus revealed through what we call the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus as proof of his love for man and then the entire creation it is called the gospel of salvation and you see in the communication of the gospel of salvation it is about the father and his benevolence and his love to man are we together and jesus christ being the mediator but now all that man does in the gospel of salvation is to believe that report and to receive by faith and the Bible says that if and when we believe that the life of God, what we call eternal life, becomes the blessing for believing that report. And then we move past that dimension of the gospel and we get to what the Bible calls the gospel of the kingdom. And like your pastor rightly said, the gospel of the kingdom is how believers become matured. When you teach the gospel of the kingdom, Jesus Christ is no longer Savior. He is King. Are we together? And those he died for are no longer sinners wallowing, looking for salvation. But they are now responsible sons and daughters in light. And the gospel of the kingdom is your communication of love and gratitude back to God for what he had done you see when you teach the gospel of salvation everything is all about what god did and you receive but now the gospel of the kingdom is your response back to the king now he is king seated and he has a desire within his heart there is a drive and it is your assignment to understand that which the king desires to see and to plunge your life and your destiny constrained by your love for him so most believers when we stop just at the level of receiving salvation and all of the rewards that come uh, as far as the gospel of salvation is concerned immaturity weakness and then 
um, we are never able to satisfy the heart of the king. This is why conferences like these are designed to help us, give us further enlightenment as to the matters of the kingdom. So I'll just take maybe one or two thoughts for tonight and then we'll get to pray. Hallelujah. Let's start with Matthew chapter 6. This is Jesus himself teaching on the kingdom. I'll begin my reading from verse 9. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray. In fact, when you read Luke's account, for, for time sake, we'll not turn there, but Luke's account of this came as a response. The disciples said, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. And then Jesus began to caution them on a few things. And then we get to verse 9 here. He says, after this manner, pray. Now, we are not teaching necessarily on prayer tonight, but he said, after this manner, not by this recitation. There is nothing wrong with reciting it, but he's teaching you a protocol to prayer. He's saying, when you want to approach prayer that is effective in this kingdom, this must be your approach. Number one, when you pray, you are approaching Abba, Father. That your prayer must be patterned after a consciousness that the one you are coming to is Abba. Abba there is Father. It means source. It means sustainer. It means defender. So that when you come to God, you do not come to him as though you have plan B. Your approach to prayer must be that you are Abba. The only one who is able to hear, to protect, that all things come from you. Are we together? And then number two, he says, which art in heaven. So he gives you an information that even though the Father is everywhere, but that you are dealing with a God who is in a dimension that is not physical, that means faith will be required for that communication. Which art in a realm that is not physical. And then number three, he says, hallowed be your name. That means do not allow familiarity just because he is Father. Do not allow familiarity to corrupt your understanding. It says, hallow be your name. Approach him with the spirit of reverence as touching what he represents. Then he says, when you are done past that, the next part of call is thy kingdom come. This is what I want to discuss briefly. Thy kingdom come. He's teaching you how to pray. So he says, come to the father and that you come by faith which art in heaven and then you come with the spirit of reverence acknowledging him as touching all that he represents and then in making any request at all in order of priority that every time you have an opportunity to make any request your prayer should be your kingdom come do you know why this is so because every other thing you are about to ask you will need to ask it simply because the kingdom has not come. He's saying if the kingdom of God actually happens and manifests in your life, many of the things you would want to ask for, you may not need to ask for it. That the fact that you have many prayer requests, they are a report card that the fullness of the kingdom has not come. Because that when the kingdom truly comes, all that will be left in your prayer is worship. Because the kingdom has a character of making sure that there is no deficiency in your life. So please keep that scripture there. Thy kingdom come. Jesus now is teaching us that in all of your requesting anything from the Father, he says don't be foolish to just ask petty things. That when you get into a, the kingdom, a kingdom mindset, you ask him for the kingdom. What is the kingdom? The kingdom here represents the fullness of the atmosphere, the fullness of the culture, and the fullness of the life of God at work. The fullness of the atmosphere, the fullness of the culture, and the fullness of the life of heaven. It says, pray that that atmosphere Pray that that 
culture and pray that that life the very life of God, the very atmosphere of God, the very culture of heaven that you pray that it superimposes your life. And then he says something very important. He says, this is what you should ask the Lord to do. Ask the Father that his kingdom comes. And then he also tells you how the kingdom comes. He said, your kingdom only comes when your will is done. There is an information here that you have to understand. He tells us what is necessary for our excelling in the kingdom. That it is the presence of the kingdom in our lives. Then he tells us what must happen for the kingdom to come. He says that anywhere the will of God is allowed to find expression, his kingdom must come there unrestrained. And then he says that your kingdom come, your will be done. He tells you the location where that kingdom should come in earth not on earth in earth that earth being you first before your environment because you are an earthen vessel so he says as you pray let your prayer and your desire be that the fullness of the life are we still together the fullness of the atmosphere, the fullness of the culture of heaven, that it finds expression in your life, this earthen vessel, then across your territory. So give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. I just request that midwife, they, they are systems of God's mercy while you are waiting for the kingdom to find expression. Because when the kingdom truly finds expression, there will not even be a need to pray that other part of the prayer again. Are we together now? Yes. Give us our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Deliver us, lead us not into temptation deliver us from evil these are powerful components but he's saying god is more than willing to do those things for you but that his greatest desire is that you experience the fullness of the kingdom write this down please the secret to manifesting the kingdom the power and the glory of god is to know and allow his will to find expression in your life. The secret to manifesting the power, the kingdom, the power and the glory of God is to know and to allow his will to find expression. Please someone say will. One more time say will. This is a word that if you do not understand then you don't know anything about the kingdom because in the kingdom everything revolves around the will of the king are we together now now in a democratic system of government is the government of the people by the people for the people so the will is centered around the people theoretically speaking are we together now so the people decide everything that happens but in the kingdom the kingdom should be a perfect reflection of the will of the king. So if the king is a wicked person, the entire kingdom reflects his will. You can know how great a kingdom is or a king is by looking at his system of government around the kingdom. Are we together now? Yes. In a true kingdom system, your opinion does not matter. It is your trusting the benevolence and the kindness of the king. You are called into compliance and you are called into obedience, not negotiation. You negotiate in a democracy. You can get up and be angry. This was the mistake of Vashti. Vashti forgot that she was queen to a king. So when the king beckoned on her, 
he wanted her to flaunt his glory that he was the king over 127 provinces the bible says she rebelled she had her own camp and she was enjoying herself she forgot that her honor was derived from her alignment to the king there is no mention of repentance in Vashti there is no mention of her saying sorry she was banished simply because she did not recognize that in a kingdom everything centers around the will of the king now you have to understand this because you see Jesus in John chapter 21 when he rose up from the dead he met Peter Peter said, I go a fishing. And the disciple says, we go with you. And then they could not catch any fish. And then eventually they met Jesus. When they came to eat, he made a statement and he says, Simon Bajona, he says, lovest thou me more than this? And he says, yes. He said, feed my sheep, feed my lamb. Then he made a statement. He says, when you are young, you are allowed to go anywhere that you would want to go. But that when you become old, someone will have to hold you and he will constrain you to go to the places that you would not even want to go. Jesus defines maturity there. That your degree of dependence is how you are matured in the spirit. Physically, the more you become an adult, the more people leave you to do that which you want to do. But he's saying in the spirit, the moment you are constrained by the will of the king so that your life does not just revolve around your desire and your appetite, the act of giving up your appetite to take the will of the king is how you function in the kingdom. Now, let me tell you why many people cannot experience the power and the glory that this kingdom carries. It is true that we know that this kingdom is a kingdom of power and that there are multifaceted um, manifestations of the glory and the power and the grace of God. Many people desire to see the wonder-working power of this kingdom at work in their lives. The simple reason I submit to you tonight is that many people do not know that the necessary and sufficient condition to become an expression of the power and the glory in this kingdom is that you must go through a conscious test or a conscious demand of dying to your will and picking up the will of the king that your entire life is constrained to revolve around the will of the king that in this kingdom if at any point you are found with any agenda that is inconsistent with that which the king's de the king desires you are a rebel immediately whether as a businessman whether as a man of god so you do not define what you intend to do with your life the very character of the kingdom demands that you are dead to enter That when you get to the kingdom, it is the very life of God that resurrects you back. And then you now resurrect not to live unto yourself again. And information is given to you immediately. Number one, that this body is no longer yours. Are we together? That even though he still leaves you with the power to choose, but that there are consequences. You have a right to live your life the way you want to live. You have a right to make your choices ignoring the government of heaven. But he tells you there are consequences. Then he now, he now reveals to you the pattern for efficiency in the kingdom. That you must understand the will of the king and pursue the will of the king. In pursuing to see the will of the king find expression in your life, that is where your glory lies. That is where your relevance lies. Let me tell you this. The area of your life that is not yet manifesting the glory of God, that is the area you have found difficulty submitting to the will of the king. So if there is glory in your health, and there is no glory in your finances I can tell you immediately the reason why the glory of the kingdom is absence in your finances is because the will of the king 
as revealed as the pattern because you see the will of the king becomes a manuscript that guides our life we don't choose what we want to do what is in the heart of the king now it will be unfair for God to want us to know his will and then he's in heaven and we are here so he gave us the spirit of God he gave us the word of God the word of God even the ministry of the spirit of God these are these are provisions that ensures that the believer is never in the dark as to the will of God is someone following tonight let me show you a few scriptures until you know the will of this king and then find out what it takes for the will of this king to manifest in your life your life cannot be an expression of the glory of God Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 please let's start from there is God helping someone tonight so next time you say thy kingdom come and your will be done you will now understand what you are saying. That is more than just a recitation found from scripture. It says, for I know the thoughts. Everybody say, God is thinking. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Sayeth the Lord. That the thoughts that I think about you are thoughts of peace. And not of evil. To give you an expected end. So number one, God is thinking. Number two, he's thinking of you. And that there are things he's thinking of you about. He's thinking of you to give you peace and an expected end. Are we together now? Very, very important. Psalm 40. Just a few scriptures very quickly. Psalm 40 from verse 7 and 8. Psalm, okay. It says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Remember, this was a prophecy that Jesus came to fulfill. Please keep that scripture there. I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Why? Verse 8. It says, I delight to do what? So, Jesus did not just excel on earth just because he was Jesus. He found a formula that the secret of the glory of God upon a man's life is to find the will of God and plunge your life there in finding and allowing the will of god to find expression in your life inevitably your life will reflect the glory and the power of this kingdom is someone learning psalm 143 and verse 10 psalm 143 and verse 10 he said teach me to do your will for thou art my god teach me teach me I know that my life, my excelling, the beauty and the glory of heaven, finding expression in my life depends on knowing and doing your will. In John chapter 4 and verse 34, John chapter 4 and verse 34, please read with me if you are a Christian, you see it projected, ready? One to read. Jesus said unto them, my meat, hold on, you know what that means? My meat means what satisfies me. My satisfaction and my fulfillment is derived from doing the will of him that sent me. That means Jesus never invented any agenda for himself. As soon as he became a teenager, he went to the temple. It was more than just a pursuit for spiritual growth. He kept checking through the scripture. What has been said concerning me that is consistent with the will of God. And he spent his entire life doing and finishing that. He has become for us the pattern man. Jesus is saying I succeeded and I excelled. Not just because I came from heaven. That the secret to my excelling. The secret to the revelation of the glory of the father in my life was that I was about doing his will. One more time, say will. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 15. Is God speaking to you? Yes. <laughs> as simple as this mystery is, 
there are several believers who keep wondering why they are unable to see the glory of God and the power of God manifest in ministry, manifest in business and it seems as though God just handpicked a few people and is giving them influence, visibility. It is not so. We are all destined to a life of glory and grace but the condition to the degree to which your life is found in the will of God that is the degree to which the glory of God is revealed you have to understand this now it says see then that ye walk circumspectly the word there means accurately not as fools but as wise what is the wisdom next verse we are reading to 17 redeeming the time do you know what this means that means anything you can do to redeem time, the Bible calls it wisdom. So if you waste time and time keeps going and you cannot justify the passage of time with purpose, the Bible calls you a fool. Are we together now? Please keep it there. It says to redeem the time and one of the greatest ways to redeem the time is given to us in verse 17. Verse 17 says, Wherefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. That means you can spend 10 years of your life doing everything you want to do and then God comes to mark the script and you will find out that in God's mind you are still 10 years from the last execution of his will you did. That's where your rating stopped. That even though there have been many activities including ministerial activities, as far as heaven is concerned, you stopped moving five years ago. And yet you are building houses and traveling, relocating and coming back. And God is saying, we only mark what is rest with respect to the king's will. That means any activity you ever find yourself doing on earth, if it is not consistent with the will of God, the Bible calls it the activity of a fool, that you are just wasting time. So when our works are tried by fire, it is tried with respect to the will of God. That means if God designs that at age 30, you should be a mighty man of God changing the globe. And at age 30, even though you are a sincere believer, but you are still in the church arguing about the principles of God, the Bible says that something according to the will of the Father, your life is in consistent violation to the will and the expectation of the Father. And listen to me. Satan... The allowance of Satan's dominion in our lives is to the degree to which we do not align to the will of God. That every time you are found in disalignment, Satan has a right to perfect your life. Is it in your Bible that he that breaks the hedge, you don't even know what that hedge is. Why will you break your own hedge? It didn't say he that comes to break your hedge. He that breaks the hedge your own hedge, that means your immunity, your protection, your relevance is found to the degree to which you are aligned to the will of God. Now watch this. Let's assume your camera here, zooming me, is static. It does not move. Watch this. If the condition for my visibility is that I stand here within the jurisdiction of this pulpit. Are you following me now? How many of you know that I have... I have a right to choose to walk around. So you will find out that I am absent. You will no longer see me there. And you will be wondering, God, but you, you said that this man should be seen. And God says this was the provision. The condition for that visibility is that provided you stand here, if the devil wants to come and shift that camera, God takes responsibility because you are in his will. Please listen. There are many things we claim in church that God, we will never get to see it. Lord, why won't you protect me? What you do not know is that everything that is supposed to be a blessing to the believer has a jurisdiction where it functions. It does not just function everywhere and anyhow. Protection, healing, influence, relevance. So one of the ways that I wish we had time would have gone to the Bible to check two dangerous doctrines. One of it is the doctrine of Balaam. One of it is the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Uh, if we had time, I would have taught you what those doctrines mean. Do you know what they mean? Those doctrines don't destroy you. They teach you something that makes you destroy yourself. 
Because for as long as they called Balaam to curse them, there was a formation that God gave them that once you are in that formation, there is no enchantment and no divination that will touch you. And so, the only way is to do something to you that will make you go out of alignment to the will of the king. Are we together? This is why you find out that there is disparity in results in the kingdom. It's not like anyone is better than any. It's not true. It's not like there are some people. Yes, there is the election of grace. But let me tell you, everyone according to the authority of scripture, the Bible says we have been called with a high and even a holy calling. There is nobody destined to be the one clapping for others. We were all designed for the top. However, the condition is that in this kingdom, if you must excel, it will be a product of your ability to relinquish your will. And you see, when you relinquish your will, you look like a fool. Except that your relinquishing your will is based on the revelation that his ways are higher than your ways. When you give up your will to pursue the will of God, it does not make sense because it looks like God is a self-centered God. Why should I give up my beautiful life? So you call it based on what you know it to be. But until you come to alignment with the will of the king, then you will know the great plans he has for you. Abraham was living his own life and never knew that he was destined for the globe. He was a local champion having a few people in his house. And if you ask Abraham, Abraham would tell you, I'm happy with my idol worship at all of the Chaldeans, not knowing that there was a destiny for him. And then God calls him and he says, Abraham, the first thing is come out of your father's house come out of your experience come out of everything you have put to yourself and go to a land that i will show you it does not have any name follow me i will define everything as you are going do you know the risk he didn't say come out and go back he said start a journey while you are going i'll keep talking to you let me tell you one of the things with the will of the king. He will never give you every information you need. He will give you sufficient to start the journey. So that you will depend on him for every part of the journey. We live in a world where people are obsessed with guarantees. Unfortunately, the way this kingdom operates, the guarantee is your, the revelation of the kind of king leading you. When David stood before Goliath, there was no guarantee. But he said, I know someone, the one who delivered me, delivered the bear and the lion. If he delivered these things, he would deliver this uncircumcised Philistine to my hand. Pastor, sir, I submit to you that there are many believers who are living their lives and the pattern of their lives are completely inconsistent with what God designed for them. There are many prophets today who are not near the place of their call. There are many people, the concept of the will of the king is a concept that the devil led us to push it out in church. Leave me, it is my life, we say. Let me do anything I want to do. Unfortunately, he will respect that. But make sure you are ready to take responsibility over the consequences Because whatever initiates your journey is what will defend and protect it when any attack comes. When Satan wants to attack you, the first thing he finds out is whether what you are doing is in the will of God. Provided it is in the will of God, he cannot attack. Go to the book of beginnings and you see Adam. Satan kept coming every day but he could not do anything to Adam. Why? Because Adam was at the center of the will of God. You, you, you imagine Satan coming. The same Satan that we're running away from. He comes around discussing with Adam. Adam replies him and doesn't pray about it. Why? Because his immunity was in the wheel. But when man fell through disobedience and disalignment, Satan had authority over him. Jesus 
who was the manifestation of the will of the father hear what he said satan cometh to me but does not find anything that means when satan comes it's not you he's looking for first there is an information about your state he's looking for to legitimize he's destroying your life are you in the will of god Is God speaking to someone tonight? First John chapter 2 and verse 17. First John chapter 2 and verse 17. And the world passeth away and the lost thereof. The Bible says, but he that doeth the will of God god what is the blessing there he abides forever do you know what it means to abide forever that even when you are not here the consistency of your walking in the will of god will immortalize your impact that even when you are not there physically like abel though dead you will still be speaking because you spent your life walking in the will of god Africa is a continent of prayer and glory to God for that. Nigeria is a nation of intense prayer. Glory be to God. But do you know the ratio of the energy that is dissipated in the place of prayer versus the genuine answer that comes out is almost depressing and frustrating. Do you agree with me? That believers if believers got answers to everything they were asking for many people would have entered their sabbath by now i will tell you what is missing it is not the energy it is not even the sincerity of heart most people do not know that the assurance of answered prayer is also connected to the will of god not just your need first john chapter 5 14 and 15 from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name First John chapter 5, please. Very quickly, verse 14. Read with me if you're a Christian. Ready? One, two, read. And this is the confidence we have. What is the confidence? That if we ask... Hold on. Anything. Anything. That means before your anything becomes what answering. That anything must be a subset of his will. If your anything does not have a program in God's will, there is no guarantee of it being answered. Answered. Are we together now? Is someone learning now? So, some of these prayers that we keep praying, the first thing before you pray is to verify whether that which you are asking for is in the will of God. An analogy that is not the best but at least is helpful when you are employed by any serious corporation you are given a letter that gives you everything the claims you can have is that true perhaps they can tell you if you work extra hours this is what we are going to add and if you want to bring any petition before your superiors the first thing you do is to go back and verify is that true that your stance has a legitimate ground based on the commitment of that corporation to you if you go and say give me a raise they will say it is within our power but justify that raise according to everything we gave you is there a provision there that legitimizes your request this is the confidence so we can ask with confidence 
we can pray with confidence. We can live with confidence. And the Bible says the confidence that we have is not just our names, not just our backgrounds. The confidence we have is that we are in the will of God. So I can go to my degree, I can go to London and land there to do ministry and have confidence. What is my confidence? It's not because I have an uncle. The confidence is that I am in the will of God. And if it is true that I am in the will of God, then the kingdom will come. Parakatosiata. Listen carefully. What gives us confidence to pray for the sick? It's not because we read a book on healing. You will be disappointed, I assure you. It is because we have found out through the ministry of the word, I'm coming here, and through the ministry of the spirit, that it is the will, it is in the will of the king that every citizen within his domain walks in health. That's what gives us the legitimate crown. And when we stand to minister, then he backs us up as proof that is in his will. Why do we prosper? We don't prosper just because we need cars and houses. The major assignment of prosperity, in addition to things like time redemption and inefficiency, is that prosperity in itself has a message. If it is true that God desires you to live well as revealed in his will, then you must prosper. You see, you're not prospering it's not just about you you're not prospering is speaking a message is negating is showing that god who is that king is a liar somewhere that means god is ever ready to prosper you not just because he loves you alone but he has a point to prove your prosperity proves to creation that he did not lie that if you don't prosper creation has a right to call god a liar Listen to me. Can I tell you this? There are no guarantees in life. Unfortunately. Some of you here, I, I know we have a session with ministers tomorrow. Please do not miss it like pastor encourage you. But let me tell you this. If you see anyone that God is doing great things with, whether in business, whether in ministry, from a kingdom standpoint, ask them the basis of their confidence and they will tell you they found out that they were in the will of God. Even if you are in the lion's den, verify first. Before you sit down and say, lions will not eat me. Verify. If you are in the will of God, go to bed. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. All the exploits that you read in scripture, in modern history and even in today, it came because men and women found out that the secret to the glory of God in the life of a man is not just making claims you cannot defend. It's finding the will of God. You will hear people will tell you no matter what the demonic plot is, they want to kill this, they want to... You don't know how powerful the will of God is. And the surrounding commitments that back his will. His will is not empty. When you find his will, there are many other things you have found. In his will is safety. His commitment is only within the jurisdiction of his will. Everybody say the will of God. One more time. Thy will be done in my life. Thy will be done in my life thy will be done in my life in my life we're about to pray let me show you a scripture hebrews chapter 13 when i found this it changed my life what i'm sharing with you tonight is a very simple message but you believe what i'm telling you your life will be nothing short of a sign and a wonder first to you and then to everyone who cares to pay attention to Hebrews 13 and verse 20. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hebrews 13 and 20. We're reading 20 and 21. Now, the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, 
that that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant now read 21 he says make you perfect in every good work to do stop there stop there don't rush that scripture God intends for you to do his will and he's praying a prayer that because he has found that you are determined to do his will his own commitment is that keep that scripture there he will make you perfect in every good work if it is his will make you perfect means make you prosperous make you perfect means make you influential make you perfect means all that it takes the moment your life is a committal to do his will you have signed something that your children and your children's children will live off the relevance the glory the health this is what covenant living is about covenant living is not selfishly choosing a promise and shouting at God and saying you said that no covenant living is your own pledge is Lord my life will be a consistent manifestation of your will and God says that's it that if you commit yourself that everything you are about is my will uh, you've heard my story years ago the Lord told me he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you that's it you have a right to project yourself and let the world see you but if you can go through the sacrifice of dying to yourself so that when they look at you they see me I said God that's it I am fine with it and my goodness to God be the glory let me just leave it there you have no you have no idea what God can do in your life when your life becomes a commitment the, most of us are running with our agenda then when we meet a stumbling block we borrow God to solve the problem and return him and continue doing our things and God says no that is not that that is not the definition of kingdom living kingdom living is not using your creativity to find what to do then when you find what to do you call God to back you up uh -uh. let me tell you how kingdom living is Lord, I cannot move if you don't move me. I don't have anything to say until I know what you want me to say. When he comes to you, he becomes your message. When he comes to you, he becomes your agenda. That all that he desires is what your life is about. No wonder Jesus is called the Logos of God. Do you know what the Logos means? The will of the Father in action. That means anything God was thinking, Jesus was about to go and do it. What perfect living. It all belongs to you. Oh, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Spare me a few minutes and let me teach you that it is not within your power to just begin to do the will of God. You have to be trained. Look up. Let me tell you, let me give you a little crash course on how God trains you to do his will. Are you ready? Lecture number one, he allows your will to fail you. Because he knows that the human spirit is so stubborn, it will not easily allow God to take his place. So he will be patient the way God trains you to trust his will is to be patient towards you while you do your thing. He won't hate you. He loves you. But he needs to give you a reason to trust him. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. The next verse says, be not wise in your own understanding. That is the mission of that course. To bring you to a point where in experience you stop being wise in your own understanding. He says, but fear the Lord and turn away from evil. So here you are with all your, you are a first class graduate, respectfully speaking, and that is wonderful. You come from a privileged family, respectfully speaking. Every time you see people worshipping and rolling on the ground and say, God, if I don't, if you don't move, I cannot go anywhere. It doesn't make sense to you. 
You are a sincere Christian, but you are surrounded by too much advantage to make God necessary. So what happens is that in the midst of what is supposed to work, you will be surprised that you will do everything right. Listen, there are times that you have the net to fish. The net is correct. There are times you are in the sea. If it's fish you are looking for, you should be in the river. There are times you have a boat, yet you will not catch fish. At such times, you don't need fishing again. You need Jesus. So when Jesus resurrected, are you getting the program now? Because many of you, this is the season you are in spiritually. For a long time, you've heard preachers say, lay everything down. When you hear the language of surrender, you say, I'm not in ministry. Just allow the preachers to do that. Uh -uh. You see, in the gospel of salvation, you don't really give your life to Christ as we say. Even though we say it generically and we understand what we're saying. But you don't give your life to Christ. You receive his life. Giving your life to Christ is now what truly makes you a useful vessel in the kingdom. Surrender. Surrender is the language of those who will be mightily used by God. They are not fools, but they have learned that outside of God's influence over my life, I don't trust what I can do. The variables are too many and I am too limited. Even my lifetime will not give me an opportunity to educate myself by myself to handle all the variables that make for an excelling life. That is the reason why you can find somebody who physically speaking everything around him is a disadvantage should not be having the results they are having you add everything up and that equation is unfair because as foolish as they were they found themselves in the will of god everybody who entered the house in in the days of uh, in, in egypt you didn't have to be a wise man once you could enter the house and there was blood on your lintel, you will be saved from death. No matter how powerful you were, if you were outside, you would die. So you see, behind all the applauds that you celebrate in quote celebrities in the kingdom, every wise person knows that all you are seeing is not a true reflection of my capacity. I am as weak as anything. My advantage and my confidence is by the leading of the Spirit and the mercy of God. He meandered me to find my place in the will of God. And I found my rest in the will of God. No wonder he says, come unto me. All you who are he, who are low labor. And that, you are not, he's not calling lazy people. He's saying you have tried. You won't get ministry that way. Man of God, you are sincere. It is true that you have done lessons and that is good. Someone one day met me and said, Apostle, this thing about healing the sick, I'm getting angry now because I've tried and tried and tried and it looks like I know it's the will of God for sick people to be healed. But why can't I see this thing in my life? I, I'm, I mean, I've read, I've did, I'm, you know, and he even said he had listened to my message and I told him, I said, my brother, you have done all these things well. You remind me of the rich man in the Bible that Jesus, he said, I've given to the poor. He said this one thing, go and sell all you have, then follow me. You know what he was telling him? Give up on everything that becomes the basis of your confidence. Depend on my will. The man said, this is hard. I don't hate you, but this is hard. Can I tell you, when you understand the will of God, the proof that you understand his will is that you will cry. If you laugh, you don't understand it yet because the will of God listen the will of God means that sometimes the entire everything you have stood upon all your life even if it is Isaac who represents your future you are willing to give it do you know what it means to stand in the will of God to lose the ability to tell him no that you can be in Lagos for 30 years and God can say it's time for you to move to a Abel Kuta or Ondo state or to move to Bauchi state and you know is God it is his responsibility to bring all the verification systems you need but if and when you know it is him it is now up to you to say Lord I don't know where you are taking me to but let me be stupid enough to go read the stories of champions in scripture 
some of them moved like fugitives only led by the will of God there was no guarantee anywhere there are some of you you came for this meeting tonight and while you are sitting God is answering you now and say the reason why your entire life is marking time is not because you are not praying it's not because you are not fasting but notice the 10% answers to your life is the part that came close to his will the part that is outside his will seems to not the the purpose of the fasting is not his will the fasting is just a system to twist god's hand to make sure your will comes to pass and he says no you can fast for 100 days if it is your will you are trying to bring you will use your energy and your strength we're going to wrap up just give me two or three minutes and we're done. God brought us tonight. In fact, if you would title this message tonight, maybe you will call it, Thy will be done. That is the secret of the manifestation of the kingdom in your life. Let me tell you this. This kingdom is not just about excessive intelligence or over dependence on the flesh. There is a place for these things. But there is already a system in God's economy where weak men can be strong. There is already a system in God's economy where some of us who did not have the privilege of an advantage, whether territorially speaking, because if it depends on just intelligence and skill and connection, some of us don't have a place. But hallelujah, his will is that leverage. His will is where the advantage is. Hallelujah. So the Lord is speaking to you and telling you that I'm going to use you. Listen, do you know what made Mary special? It was not the pregnancy. It was the fact that she was willing to inconvenience herself. The angel came to say you are highly favored and said, listen, now something is about to happen to you. You are going to be pregnant, but this pregnancy will bring trouble to you. However, in that trouble is the will of God. Are you willing? Mary thought about it. She said, okay, how shall these things be? At least explain to me. And the angel took time. That's how far God can go when he knows you are ready to do his will. He will come to you and explain and say, this is what I'm about doing. Are, are, you, are you learning now? Listen very carefully. The will of God. When you find the will of God, and you plunge into it do you know that the salvation of the gentile church came because of men who could understand the will of god peter was up having siesta and then he saw a vision and he kill and eat and all of that it gave him a revelation and when they came to look for him from the house of cornelius knowing it was the will of god he came down he said i am here let's go it was that lecture that brought the salvation of the Gentiles. Just because God wanted the Gentiles to be saved did not mean they would have been saved. It depended on men. Can I tell you, the will of God over many families has been crying. It cried during the time of your grandfather. He lived his life and ignored the will. Whereas in God's blueprint, his will was that your family will become a voice. But your grandfather went around doing his thing. Respectfully speaking, some of you, your parents went about doing their things out of seven of you all six have rejected the will of god living their lives lord don't interrupt me let me do what social media says i should do let me do what this says i should do but god brought you tonight that you will say thy will thy will i may not understand it but thy will be done that it is time for the glory of this kingdom it is time for the power of this kingdom to find expression enough of living a defeated life enough of living a frustrated life reading things and preaching things you cannot explain or you cannot defend that your life ought to be a living epistle a sign and a wonder thy will be done respectfully speaking don't miss the, the, the pastor's conference there are many, many men of God who sincerely love the Lord. If they only have a picture of how far God can take them. But there is fear. If I give up my will, how am I sure 
that I will not end up being a fool. Because we live in a society where some people try to obey the will of God and then later change their mind and it looks like they failed. Nobody obeys God to the latter and fails. But if you start and turn back, it still counts that you did not start. You want to see the power of God in your life? No matter how you pray, no matter how you fast, your real prayer should not be for power. It's for the grace to walk in His will. There are many of you, God has anointed you even in business. And yet you have not taken time to discern. Lord, since I am yours, what is it that you have prepared? Oh, look at Jesus. He said, lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do your will. That is not just true for Jesus. It's true for all of us. To do your will as it is written of me. To do your will as it is written of me. Okay, my will for you is that you have Calvary Bible Church, a platform, and you will write a book and do this to the degree to which you obey that will. There is no power in existence. All these things people cry around, believe me, I'm not a stupid person and I'm not financially illiterate. Most of the things people run around saying, there is no money, there's no capital. You don't know how powerful this government is when you are in the will of God. Sometimes it's not fair to give testimonies and say things because it, it makes it look like, it may, see, the things we have seen, the things we have heard, even that which our hands have handled, if you are in a cave doing the will of God, the world will meet you there. I assure you by God. We have to pray. Let's have one prayer point then we'll end for tonight. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Let's pray the prayer that Paul prayed over the church in Colossae. Please carry this message tonight. Cherish it with all your heart. Don't just say you came and listened to a powerful man of God. Don't just say you came for you know the kingdom conference. Go back and say I found the key. This is why it looks like God is far from me. This is why it looks like I keep I, I, I keep helping others I teach them all they need to know and then in addition they align all they know to the will of God you see the goal is not to make you a fool the goal is to make you submitted to the will of God for as long as Anna wanted a child just to stop the shame of looking like she was barren, no child came. But the day she said, Lord, you are looking for a prophet. It is in your will. She prayed once. And Eli blessed her. And a child came. When he came to Gideon, he revealed his will. It was up to Gideon to obey. And he got up foolishly. Even Jesus said, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup of me. But he said, nevertheless, I know the risk of going outside your will. For three and a half years now, I have excelled simply because I was in your will. I will not give up at this point. Nevertheless, the prayer tonight is going to be nevertheless. Lord, I know I have my plans and it is good to plan. But I am ready to submit my entire plan to your will. Hold on. Colossians 1.9, please. Let me read it as we wrap up. Colossians 1.9. Paul prayed a prayer over the church in Colossae. And I'm standing on the grace of your man of God. And this is our prayer tonight as we wrap up this session. He says, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you be filled with the knowledge of his will. Filled. The knowledge of his will. That is where my glory lies. Because his kingdom only comes where his will is done. Is someone ready to pray? Lord, nevertheless, your will be done Lord, in my life. Go ahead and pray. Nevertheless, Lord, 
Let your go ahead and done in my life. Go ahead and Lord, let it be from the your depth of your heart. Over my will. Lord, I submit my will to your will. Every aspect myself. of my life. Every area I of submit my life. to your will. Let your will prevail. Nevertheless, but your will in the name of Jesus over every situation, over every circumstance, let your will prevail. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let your will be done. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let your will prevail. In the name of Hallelujah. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, I've been given an opportunity, just two, three minutes. Hold on, please. No movement. The man of God has given me an opportunity to pray for those who really truly need Jesus listen an altar call is not a call for weak people to just come and stand as though they are defeated uh -uh. an altar call is your first indication that you desire to walk in the will of God because the Bible says his will is that he desires for all men to be saved so when you open up your heart to experience salvation I saw several people outside. There are several people within this auditorium. And I know there are people who are saying, Apostle, if you will give me an opportunity, I want to make things right. I'm tired of acting like things are okay. Two calls in one. Those who have never truly made a genuine decision for Jesus. And then those who are saying, Apostle, I, I remember making this decision for Jesus, but as it is right now, my life has gone haywire. I do not want to miss out my security my safety the revelation of the glory of the kingdom is in my responding to his will our time is up i'm going to count one to three wherever you are within this auditorium may i request is that all right that i request that you come out here very quickly i'm going to count one to three be the first to be here don't wait for anyone to come before you one let's celebrate them as they come for those in the overflow you can move to your um, your LED, your screen and stand there and those following from home here is your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life I count to three and then I begin to pray if you are coming please run and come two win that war tonight now is your chance, come 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 Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Join them. There is such a thing as the assurance of salvation. You can know tonight for sure and for certain. Now, if, if the space in front is exhausted, I may request that you just stand anywhere you are. The most important thing is that you connect by faith. Okay. Just, just follow the ushers as they direct you, and then we pray. Thank you very much for making this bold decision. Listen to me. The most important the most important show of honor to the will of God is coming to receive his life in total surrender believing that he has the power to save you rejecting the call of Jesus is pride because it means you are declaring that you have the power within yourself to help yourself come those who are coming please one minute our time is up please come very quickly Come quickly. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. May I request for all of you who have made this call I appreciate you thank you for the courage to have made this glorious call the Bible says as many who will come to him that you will in no wise cast away would you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of total and genuine surrender and say this after me let it be loud and clear from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you are my savior I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again 
for my justification right now I declare that Jesus is my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that from tonight I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name amen and amen keep your hands lifted father I pray for these ones by the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven and I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit may you be established in righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ according to your confession I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life you walk in newness of life from tonight in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen all right please all of you who are here I know there are a number of you in a very orderly way please move to my left which is your right there'll be a few counselors who will have a word with you very briefly and then you'll return let's honor them let's celebrate them as they go Please make sure all of you who made the altar call, please do respond. Follow the counselors. Is this the best you can do? Celebrate salvation. Keep clapping until the last person moves. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till your work on earth is done. Sing it one more time with me. Thank you, oh for giving us. Your spirit and your work on earth is done. Woo! Celebrate Jesus. Christ.